What's going on YouTube? This is What Would Josh Do? And we're back again with another Note 3 video. This video can be used on every single variant of the Note 3, except for AT&T and Verizon because those have locked bootloaders. I believe they do. I know the S5 does. We <laughs> Don't even get me started with the S5. Oh my God. We have an S5 on AT&T and that's going to change very soon. To root the Note 3 with, an, with a device that does not have an unlocked bootloader, you are going to flip Knox. If you have not flipped Knox, you're going to flip it. Your warranty is going to be permanently void and there's going to be no way in hell to go back to having an untripped uh, bootloader. So th there's no way to untrip. There's no way to reset it. You, once you root it one time, you might as well just keep it rooted and enjoy having root access. Uh, I, in my honest opinion, it is worth it to trip it if you have to in order to have root. I will not have a device without root. I will not have a device that I cannot back up my apps, restore them, uh, use Tether because some carriers require you to pay money. But if you're rooted, you can download an app called Wi-Fi Tether Router. It's a couple bucks, but it's worth it. And you can tether without your carrier knowing. Also, if you have a carrier where you're only allowed to have a certain limit of tether usage, it sees it as mobile data. So you're actually able to do it unlimited if you have T-Mobile. That's if you want to do that. That's on you. I'm not recommending you do that. I mean, if you can afford to pay for your, your carrier for the extra tether stuff, then do it. So basically, you'll Google CF Auto Route and you'll click this first link that you see right here. It'll take you to Chainfire's website. Now you can hit control F to search the page. And this Sprint Note 3 is the N900P. So it brought it up right there. Now, sometimes you're not gonna see a forum next to it. So you'll have to hit the file. I'm gonna go ahead and open the file in a new tab. And I'm also gonna click on the forum. If it has a forum button for your device, then you'll go here. Uh, I'll also link to this in the description. And if you go down to like the third post, if you go down to the third post, it'll say T-Mobile, Sprint, US Cellular, Canada, Korea, China, other models, T-Mobile, US, Sprint. So yeah, all of these are ones that work. Oh, and the International Exynos and the International Qualcomm, all of those that are in the post three work. So we're gonna download the one for the Sprint Note 3. Now, when I clicked file, it opened up this tab right here. So this contains the instructions and all the other links that you're going to need for other variants. But we're going to go down here and you'll see CF Auto Root, HLTE, SPR. SPR Sprint, BZW is Verizon, which has a locked bootloader, so you can't use this. TMO is T-Mobile, ATT is AT&T, uh, etc. So you'll just know which one you're flashing by going by the last letter. So we're going to click on it. It's gonna ask us to download it. We're gonna save it to our desktop. That's just the easiest way to find it. And also, you do need these Samsung USB drivers. If you plug your phone in and it does not detect your phone, you need to uninstall anything by Samsung on your computer. You need to download the very latest Samsung drivers. If I remember to, I will do my best to link to the very latest drivers in the description of this video. So you'll need to click the text that says show more to expand the description and see all of the links in there. There'll be a link to CF Auto Root. There'll be a link to the latest Samsung USB drivers. There'll be a link to how to flash your phone stock and everything. So the description will be your friend, I promise. And CF Auto Root. So we're gonna go ahead and exit out of here. It's on our desktop. We're using a program called 7-Zip. It's open source and it's free, just like Android. We're gonna right click on the folder and we're gonna hit extract to, and it's gonna make a new folder called CF Auto Root. And in here, you're gonna see Odin 307 and you're gonna see the image that you need for the phone that you have. So we're gonna right click on Odin and then run it as the administrator. And for the PDA button, and Chainfire is amazing, he has all the options where you cannot check them, you cannot screw this up, you cannot hit phone, you cannot hit anything but PDA. And then it's gonna go in that folder that it created on your desktop and you'll just open up this CF Auto Root and hit open. Now, you need to put your device into download mode. So how you're gonna do that is power it off, shut it down, all right, it just vibrated, the lights went away. So we're gonna hold volume down, home and power. We're gonna get to this little screen right here. 
and we're just going to hit volume up to confirm that we want to get into this mode. Again, if your says all official and your your Knox is 0x0, this is going to throw it to 0x1. And like I said in the beginning, there is absolutely no way to reverse this. If your Knox warranty says 0x0 and you continue following along with this video, that's going to say 0x1 and there is not going to be a way to reset that. I'm repeating myself to make myself very clear for those of you that are watching this video and do this and then you go and they check your bootloader, they see that you unlocked it or you rooted it and then they, you know, whatever, that's on you because you're doing, you're deciding to do these modifications to your device. So... Like I said, it's worth it to me to go through all that trouble. It's worth it to me. We're going to plug our phone in. It's going to say COM and then a number. Do not worry if yours says COM5, COM6, COM7. The number does not matter. It just needs to say COM. If it does not say COM, then that's an issue with your drivers. Like I said earlier, uninstall any Samsung drivers you have. Go to uh, hit the Windows Q button if you're on Windows 8 and then type uninstall a program and then go to program and features or uninstall a program and then look for samsung and delete all the samsung stuff install the very latest ones that i'll have linked in the description and then yours should hopefully say com and then a number so let's go ahead and hit start and this is the moment of truth this is where your device will no longer be 100 stock and you will have well it'll still be 100 stock but you'll have root access you will be rooted you can install custom recovery. You can install um, apps that require root. You can back up your phone, restore it. It's, it's just, and it, this does not wipe your data. This process does not change anything about your phone. You're gonna get this nice little splash screen and then in a second, it's gonna go away. And now, we're rooted. Once it reboots, it's going to say Android is upgrading, and you're going to see a brand new app in your app drawer called Super SU. And now we've tripped Knox. Well, I mean, we tripped Knox before, but if you hadn't tripped Knox, now it's tripped. <laughs> so enjoy having root. I'm telling you. And, and consider installing CyanogenMod 11. I have a video that I can link to in the description showing how to install CyanogenMod 11. So consider installing it. It's a great ROM. So. Now we'll see Super SU. Knox has been detected. This might limit root capabilities. Okay, disabling Knox. Knox was disabled successfully. So I'm already following Chainfire on Twitter and Google Plus. I highly recommend following him. He's an amazing developer. He makes awesome apps like a live wallpaper called 500 Buyer Paper. Everybody asks me all the time, where's your wallpaper from? Where's your wallpaper from? Well, it's because 500 Fire Paper keeps, you know, putting different wallpapers on my device. So in here, I highly recommend unchecking reauthentication. That is optional. Basically, anytime an app like Titanium Backup has an update, it's going to ask you to grant it root every single time the app updates. If you uncheck this box, you're, it'll no longer ask you, hey, do you want to grant this root? And you're like, didn't I just grant you root yesterday? Oh, that's right. It updated. And every time it updates, it's going to re-ask you again, do you want to give this root? And it just said pass. But you can ignore that because once your phone boots up and you see that you have root, you're, you're rooted. So uh, also another thing is if you uninstall an app, sometimes... In your uh, apps here, you'll see that app, but it won't have an icon next to it. It'll say like text, the name of the app that it used to be that was on there, but it won't have an icon. You'll need to click on it and then hit forget. So if you have this checked, then if you uninstall it, it says right there, ask for permission when an app is reinstalled or upgraded. So I uncheck it. And everything else in here, you can leave alone. Uh, one thing you can consider doing is upgrading to Pro. I have purchased it, so when I log into my Google account, it'll say install. A lot of people say I talk too much, but honestly, I'm you're you're doing this may be your very first time rooting an Android device. This might be your very first time and you're scared or you're nervous, and I want to walk you through everything that could possibly go wrong, and I don't want you to feel left alone. I want to just go over most everything that I can think of and talk about it with you. 
Also, what I do recommend doing is going to your settings, go to general, and then if you go to about device and you go down here to your build number, keep tapping on that. Go back and now you'll see a new option called developer options. Enable USB debugging. And then I also uncheck verify apps over USB. Of course, that's optional, but you do need to check USB debugging if you plan on using titanium backup. To speed up animations, just uh, 0.5. It'll feel like you have a faster phone, I promise. And then go back. And then also, if you plan on using titanium backup, go to security and then uh, make passwords visible. I uncheck that because I don't want my passwords visible as I'm typing them. Verify apps. That's going to get on your nerves. It's going to say accept every single time you try to restore an app or install one that's outside of the Play Store. So uncheck that. And this is important. You need to check unknown sources and press OK if you plan on using Titanium Backup or if you want to install apps outside of the Play Store because there are some apps that the Play Store does not allow that aren't necessarily bad. They're just... Yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> All right. That about wraps it up. We have a device that's rooted. We can install custom recovery. An app I recommend trying to use is Rasher, R-A-S-H-R. It used to be called Recovery Tools, but he changed the name of it. And it is made by DSL Nexus. If you install this, uh, also we can test out our root here and then we'll end the video, I promise. We'll end the video after this installs and I show you that we have root. Okay, I lied. We're also gonna install Titanium Backup. I purchased the pro version, so I'm going to go ahead and install the pro version as well so we get all the pro features. Also, another important thing is Super SU just updated. So if we go to our apps that updated, at whenever you see that Super SU had an update, you need to open up Super SU right here. It's in our recently updated. Hit open. It should say, sometimes it'll say your binary needs to update. Hit the OK button and hit normal. It should flash the new binary just fine. So if you see that Super SU had an update like you see all those apps up there installing and updating, then make sure you open up Super SU and you update your binary and then you reboot when it says to. So we're going to open up Rasher here and it's going to try to get root. There we go. This lets us know right here that we are rooted. So hit grant. And then this is saying that you don't have any recovery or whatever. You can back it up, hit OK, and that's the recovery. And you'll see right there, not recognize recovery because we don't have recovery. You can go to flash recovery, go to twerp, and most of the time they do not have the latest version. So you can actually Google twerp sprint note three, go to the Terechta or whatever it's pronounced website. And then you go to download latest image. You download the image and flash it with this tool or you download the tar and you flash it with Odin. So also one more thing I want to talk about since we're rooted and this video is already a little long. You can see right there we have root. Titanium Backup is requesting that we grant it root permission. If you get a message about your Android ID being changed, you want to hit restore the previous ID. Basically any apps that required on the device's specific Android ID, uh, and once that ID changes, it when you restore the data, it may go, ho, 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 hold on there just a second. This data belonged to a different phone. So if it asks you to restore, I highly recommend choosing restore. All right, so another important thing is, uh, uh, I'm sorry this video is so long. If we go to the Play Store here, and we go to Lumen Toolbar, you'll see this toolbar right here. If you hit uninstall, and then you hit OK, you're going to see that you have open and update. You cannot actually fully remove this. And a lot of the reviews in here will be one star saying how it's bloat, they can't remove it, and etc. What you're going to do is open up Titanium Backup. I checked USB debugging. I don't know why. Also, if you have an overview and it doesn't actually show where your storage is, go to Menu, Preferences, Backup Folder Location, Detect, Whole Device, and it'll find the external SD card. That's because with CyanogenMod, it's called SD card one. 
not external SD card. So we'll choose that, hit use current folder, back out. And then if the program does not auto reload, go to menu, reload application. And now it won't say overview. I have USB debugging on. Developer options, okay. USB debugging, okay. Don't know why that was unchecked. See, Titania Backup was saying you need to enable that. And I'd already enabled it, but for some reason it was not enabled. Ba back to what we're talking about. Edit tools, L-U-M-E-N. Hit the search button. Look at that, it's red. Red means this is a system app. And normally you are not allowed to access system apps. Well, since you're rooted, you can go here and hit uninstall. It's going to tell you you do not have a backup. So hit yes. And then it's going to warn you, hey, this is a system. Yes. All right. So now if we go to the Play Store, look at the, no, 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 don't. Look at that. It says install. It does not say open or update. It says install. That means it's not installed. Also, this little beep and go thing here, I cannot remember the name of it. They changed it. If I remember, I will put the name of the app in the description. Uh, they actually made it kind of hard to remove because it's not called what you're gonna see with the name here. So now that you're rooted, you can uninstall any apps that you don't want. Also, you'll notice that our apps are not in alphabetical order. Hit menu, view type, alphabetical grid. Bam, everything's in alphabetical order. I cannot remember what that stupid beep and go app is called, but again, if I remember it, I will put it in the description, the name of it, and then you'll just search that name in Titanium Backup, and you can uninstall it just like we did the Lumen Toolbar. That is if you don't want it on there. If you enjoyed this video on how to easily root your Samsung Note 3, please give it a thumbs up. It's just a little click, but trust me, it goes a long way and it helps the channel out more than you probably know. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you want to stay up to date on the latest videos that I'm working on. And if you want to know when the next video is coming out. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel to not miss out on any future Note 3 videos and videos on accessories and etc. This is What Would Josh Do? And I'm out.